You've all seen it, but is this actually accurate? Is this how marine life react to underwater photography? Well, depending on your gear, yeah, it is. But it's not the power of your lights or the lumens that you're using that are causing this. Now, this video is going to be addressing concerns of whether or not using high-powered video lights affect, harm, or scare away marine life while shooting. And if so, how you can reduce the risk of harming marine life while you shoot, increase your chances of getting better wildlife encounters, and obviously getting better footage by looking for lights with this one simple quality. Regarding flash photography and the use of strobes, there have been a number of studies conducted on a number of different species, including seahorses, pipefish, frogfish, and benthic fishes that suggest the answer is no. The use of strobes in underwater photography does not affect the animal any more than simply the presence of the diver being there. Now, the reason for this is because most decent quality strobes nowadays emit a beam of light that is very natural and very closely resembles natural sunlight, where the animal's eyes are able to adjust very quickly and it doesn't harm or irritate and doesn't spook the animal while shooting underwater. However, this becomes far more difficult when we start talking about video lights, which emit a constant beam of light, as it's far more difficult to have a light that emits a constant high power beam of light that has properties that closely resembles natural sunlight. Now, what we're talking about here is in my mind, the most valuable thing in underwater lighting, and that is a light's color rendition index, or CRI, which is a far less sexy stat than Kelvin or lumens or battery light and probably why most of us have never heard of it. Simply put, the higher your CRI is, the more closely your light resembles natural sunlight and the more of the color spectrum your light is able to reproduce. And the lower your CRI, the more artificial your light is, the less of the color spectrum it reproduces and the sharper, more straining its light peaks are. Now before you get bored and click away, this is what it looks like when you try and take a shot with a low CRI light. <laughs> except in reality, the animal would get spooked and swim away well before you got close enough. Now compare this to a shot taken with a light with high CRI. Note the animal isn't phased at all and the encounter is epic. Of course, this is generalizing, but you get the idea of where I'm headed. It's exactly the same for the human eye. If you've ever spent a long time under fluorescent lighting or in a room with fluorescent lights, you'll know how hard that can be on your eyes. And it's simply because that is an artificial source of light with a low CRI. However, on the contrary, the human eye can withstand a much longer period of time under much, much brighter lights with high CRI without being strained simply because the lights more closely resemble that of natural sunlight. This is similarly true for a large array of wildlife. If you want to get close and get those epic encounters and get that footage, you can't be pointing lights towards your subject that are irritative or harmful as they will get spooked and swim away. Now, if any of you have been following my channel for a while, you'll probably know that over the last few years, I've been shooting with these Orca Torch lights, and that's simply because the quality of light they put out is extremely good with a CRI rating of 92 out of a possible 100. Now, what you'll find with a lot of the competition and a lot of other light manufacturers is they're producing lights with CRI ratings between 70 to 85, and even a drop in a few CRI results in significant changes to the quality of light you're using. So if you're wondering how I get some of these shots and get so close to the wildlife without spooking them, I honestly think a part of that has to do with the fact that I'm using lights that emit a very natural looking beam of light that doesn't harm or spook the animal due to its unnatural nature. Also, what you'll find with low CRI lights from a color and photography perspective is that they emit far more green colors and far less red light. Now, one of the main reasons we use underwater video lights is to add back a lot of those lost red colors we experience while diving with depth and bring back a bit of natural looking vibrancy to our footage. What we end up doing though, when we use a low CRI light to do this is we're adding some green light to our green tinted footage, which is obviously less desirable than using a light with high CRI that has a far more natural beam of light and a lot more red colors. This is truly an example of you get what you pay for. If you want to film those epic wildlife encounters with accurate colors, with less chance of harming, spooking, or irritating the wildlife, then a light with high CRI will help you do that. Now, obviously the common sense test here still applies. No shot, no matter how good, is worth harming the environment that you're in. Well, that's all I got for this one. Happy shooting.